Assembly family and also all you YouTubers out there. It's good to be back. Good to see each and every one of you. Uh, just want to welcome you on this uh, Sunday, May the uh, 17th. For those of you that couldn't make it to our church service, hello. Uh, we're doing, through the month of May, we are doing our church services again, but we're doing it at 1030 in the morning for our service. No Sunday school, no night service until we start June. Hopefully by then we'll get back on regular schedule. Also, we're still having, we're, we have started having a Tuesday night Bible study at 630 for the adults and for the older teen class. And this too will go until the end of May and then Again, hopefully in June, we can get back on a regular schedule where everybody will meet of all ages on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock like we usually do. We'll try to keep you more informed as we get closer to that time. And so today we want to go ahead and get into God's Word, what He's given to us today. And I pray that it's a blessing to you. Uh, now, our uh, text is going to be out of Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 11, one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament. And uh, the, the sermon, uh, God woke me up last night. When, uh, I've been trying to work on a sermon and just struggling. And then about midnight, God got me out of bed, got me up, and just began to pour into me. And so I, pray, I believe this is going to be a blessing for all of you that listen to this today, and especially for those that actually attend our church. And we hope that, that God touches your heart with this. And even if you don't want to come to our church, maybe it'll make you want to be part of another church. Uh, God preach in church, okay? Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 11, and it reads, Bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will be not room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your, fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bring fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Now, I said, God woke me up on as I got up. And one of the things that I like to do, and especially when it happens the way it happened last night, because out of all this verse, what God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, kept speaking into me while I lay there in my bed was, try me, try me now, that try me now in this. And so I went to the Webster's Dictionary, because we have words that we use all the time. Usually it's the very simple words. And sometimes we just need to be refreshed on what the, memory, the meaning of that actually is. And we, we all say, well, I know the meaning of try, but let's just look because in the Bible it says to make an attempt, which is what most of us would say. It is also put to a test. And the, another version is uh, to uh, examine or investigate. Okay, so it's to make an attempt, to put to a test, and to examine or investigate. And with that in mind, we then we go back and we begin to look at what God's telling us. Now, before he tells us uh, to try me in this, the first thing he says in this set of scripture is bring all the tithes into the storehouse. I'm going to tell you, I, for a fact, too many people get all tied up and messed up when they try to follow God because of money. Uh, one of the things you always hear is that old preacher, all he wants is my money. All they care about is my money. And th there's really a good reason for that because of all the televangelists and people uh, on TV that that seems like all they talk about, send in your love offering, send in your tithe, send in your money, send in your blessing. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about God says, give the biblical standard 10% of your tithes. Bring in all your tithes. Too many people don't even want to do that. They'll say, I can't afford to pay 10%. Well, I, honestly, when you look at that, what you are saying is, I trust God, just not with my money. Because if you trust God, you will give him your 10% like he wants you to do. Because you, you, you understand that he owns all things. Like the Bible says, he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. You trust him to provide for all of your needs. It's not just lip service. You are giving your 10% because you are trusting in the Lord to take care and make sure that you're provided for and everything else. So giving your 10% should be automatic. It should be the first thing you do. It's the first thing me and my wife do. We give our 10%. And so when you do this, you're trying God right off the bat. 
you're saying, okay, God, I'm going to give this a try. I'm going to give my 10% like you asked and see where it goes from there. And that's what's happening here. Now, we have in our church and what's going on in our little church, we have people that are paying their tithes. We have some that are not only paying their tithes, but they're bringing in offerings too. They're listening to the move of the Holy Spirit. They're God, and, and when that happens, God is blessing them in a supernatural way. We hear story. We see it time after time where they're provided for. Me and my wife have experiences. And why is this happening? Because we are following this principle here where God says, try me. Check me out. Put me to the test. And check, listen, examine the evidence when you try me and see if I am not going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you. And that's what God is doing because they are trying the Lord. They're taking him on his word. See, God, when he tells you to do something, he expects you to do it. And he says, try me. Examine it. Look at all the evidence. Put it out there. Come to me. And whenever in the flesh you, to try to, you decide to try something, understand, it costs you something. I'm talking about when you look at a principle that God's talking here about, we look at it in our flesh. Whenever you decide to try something, it costs you something. If you decide to try a new hobby, it's going to cost you money to get started in it. It's going to cost you time. You're going to have to take time that you would spend somewhere else, a percentage of your time, in order to try this new hobby. So whenever in, in, in life, whenever we decide to try something, it cost us something. That's just a natural principle. And if, the sooner you realize that and the sooner you look at that, the sooner you can begin to move on and move up with God in toward, into getting the blessings that he wants to pour out on you and into a church that you may be going to. Usually, uh, another point is that usually the more extravagant you try something, the more you have to sacrifice and the more willing you are to do it. In other words, when you are really into it, and especially if it's something that costs money, you a lot more money than other things, you are more sacrificial. Something If you decided you wanted to get in a four-wheeler and you bought a four-wheeler, that's going to cost you several thousand dollars versus if you decided just to ride a bicycle right off the bat. And so you, you have to invest. You're sacrificing something else in order to be able to invest all that money into this. And then once you buy it, you're going to want to ride it and drive it. And so you're investing that time and you're more willing to do it because of what you've got invested in it. And it's, this is what God is saying in this principle that he wants us to do. And so he tells us, so when you offer up your tithes, you offer up your offerings, when you offer up your time, when you offer up your effort to try what the Lord speaks into your life, that is what pleases him. That is what he's looking for in his people because when it pleases him in return, then he opens up his storehouse and he pours out on us, he pours out on you a blessing into your old body, into the church body that you cannot contain. We have been seeing this in here in our church. Those of you that come, you I tell you all the time, you got to be blind if you don't see what God's doing, where he's continually opening up new doors that don't make sense, but for especially for the church, the size we are, because we are a small church. But it does not mean that in God's kingdom, we can't be a powerful church. And that's what we're doing. Why did he choose us? There's other churches in the area that's, that's four and five times bigger than us. They've got more money than us. They've got bigger facilities than us, or they did. But God looks for people who will try him, who will take him up. Too many times, too many churches, in my opinion, when God puts a, tells them to do something, when somebody gets a vision from God, when the Holy Spirit begins to move in them, they instead of going, okay, God, I'm going to try this, they go, well, that's impossible. I can't, I don't see how we can do it. We can't afford it. We can't, I don't want to give this much time. It's going to take too much effort. It's going to be too much work. And what they're doing and what we people are in God's kingdom are doing far too often is they're missing out on the blessing that God wants to pour out on them, upon their church, and upon their community because they will not try God in the situation he's trying to put them in. Now, it tells us that when we please him and he, and he opens up a storehouse, 
He pours out us that blessing on us that we can't contain. And so what happens then is in turn, if we are truly in step and looking for God's plan, it makes us, when this blessing comes down, it should make you want to uh, give more of yourself, more of your time, more of whatever you're sacrificing to see what God's going to do next. Because when you know God is really moving, when you see it, you, and, and if you really follow him, it should well up in your spirit. It should excite you in a way like nothing of this whole world can. When you God is using you, when he's moving through you, when he's moving through your church, when he's blessing your church, be all on all your, your human understanding. The only way you can understand it, the only way you can believe it, the only way you can uh, work it out is only through supernatural uh, sight. And understanding that this is truly a move of God through you. Now, uh, I guess you could say that it makes us look to heaven once again. It makes us look and say, what do you want us to do now, Lord? That's how God moves in his kingdom. If you look through all the, through the testaments of the Old and New Testament and Bible, God would go to people. He would go, he went to Gideon. And he, t and he said, hey, oh, great and mighty warrior. And he said, who, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm hiding out here in this, uh, this granary, and my family's the smallest of all the clans in Israel. But see, God saw what he could do, and he said, come on, get in, try me. He said, I'm going to take you, and I'm going to use you. And so Gideon tried him. Remember Gideon's fleece? It was small. It was simple. But he tried the Lord, and the Lord proved. And so Gideon then trusted him for bigger and greater things. And many times, we refuse to even do a fleece test with God. We just simply say, I can't do it. But like the new song says, even the impossible is possible with God. we got to get that back into us. And if we want to turn our, our communities around, if we want to save our friends and save our our, our, our relatives and say all our loved ones, if we want to touch our communities, if we want to change our country and get it back to where it needs to be, we need to start trying God more. We need to get, we need to quit trying to do things on our own or through political parties and get to the real King of Kings who has all authority on heaven and earth and things happen when he just speaks the word. That's what we need to do, people. We need to get back to that. Listen, I guess, uh, a good example of what I'm saying about how God wants to pour out blessing and then we, we in return, we try him for, and, and do more and he pours out a bigger blessing. Uh, he goes on and he says that uh, in the next verse, he says, we're going to do this, that there may be food in my house, the church house, but also our bodies. Our bodies are the temple of God. And Jesus, uh, he's saying, I want to pour out, you'll try me, then I will pour out into the to, the to the body of Christ. I will pour out into the church the blessings that they need in that church. What is your church lacking? God, you know, he says food. It's something that helps you to grow. Food is nourishment to help you grow. And in a God's house, the food might be the sound equipment. It might be it might be something to update your your uh, the, the church. It might be whatever it needs to keep God's house in good order to make it attractive so people will come in and hear the gospel. It might, be the, it might be a van. It might be whatever it is to help it grow, to help nourish his house, to help it grow. Are you lacking in something? Maybe we need to start trying the Lord once again. Instead of putting our faith in programs, putting our faith in the government, putting our faith in whoever throws in the biggest tithes, and start doing our part by trying God. Checking him out, saying, okay, Lord, here's what I can do. Here's my tithes. I'm willing to give my time. I'm going to try you. You tell me that if I do this and I, I do it faithfully, that you will open up your storehouse and you will pour out a blessing. So I'm going to try it, Lord. I'm going to put my faith in you instead of things of this world. I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to listen to your word. I'm going to let your Holy Spirit guide me. It don't make sense, but I'm going to follow it. I don't see how it's going to happen, but I'm going to go through with it. I'm going to keep on moving. I'm trying you, Lord, and I'm standing up on your word. Now, he says, Says the Lord of hosts, if I, uh, I, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. When he opened up the windows of heaven, humanity cannot contain 
He can't, you, we can't contain it. Or in other words, we don't have room to receive it. It's that way in the supernatural spiritual realm in our flesh. And it's that way when we're doing the work of the kingdom. God tells us that. He shows us that because when he pours out a blessing upon us, when he pours out the, the that's why when uh, he pours out and we get the blessing of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we bubble over with tongues. We, we can't hold it inside because it's more. We're baptized. We're immersed. It completely covers us. It's more than this old human body can stand. That's why we have to praise him. That's why we got to testify about him. That's why we run. That's why we shout. That's why we got to tell somebody and that's how he blesses us and that's why we got to tell about that blessing that's why we got to testify because when we are truly when we are truly blessed by him when he when we try him we in this body we can't contain it and he also shows us in tangible ways like that that the building uh that the building will not be able to contain it right now we got plenty of room in our church <coughs> excuse me for our congregation but I don't believe it's always going to be that way. But he started out, if we look at the feeding program and we did, that we have in our church, it started out with just a couple of freezers and, or one freezer and a couple of refrigerators in, our, in uh, our gym. And then it grew to where we've got, I don't know, half a dozen or more freezers and almost that many refrigerators. And not only that, but now we've had to, we've, we were blessed because we needed it and because we kept trying God. And, we, and he keeps pouring out more than, than we ever thought possible, especially with our funds that we just put out there. Now we also have another building that's provided by the city that we're using to bless other communities. And, and, it, and it keeps going on. But guess what? Uh, now that we, uh, we've got uh, some more stuff coming in from other organizations that have heard of our, what we're doing. God has put it in their ear. God has put it in their heart. And they're sending in more trucks that we can't, are, you know, it's like I said to get back. He says, see if I won't pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. Our freezers are full right now. And now we're looking at getting stuff in that we have, even if our freezers were totally empty, there's no way they'll hold what God is showing us he's going to bring in. We're going to have to get rid of it. And we have churches that have come alongside that we're helping that take stuff. And when, when it comes in for the other uh, building and we fill that other building up and in the next couple of days, we have churches, like 15 of them that come in and they gather up all the stuff and they take it out to distribute uh, to, through and bless their communities. And now with, with what's supposed to be coming in they're not even going to be able to contain it. God is just continually showing us that as long as we follow his word and as long as we go after and do this, as long as we try him, we're never going to be able to keep up with him. As long as we're doing it for his, for his glory, as long as we're doing it for his kingdom. How about the house of God? Because, you see, he's doing this because of one reason. Because ultimately, he wants his house filled. Now, it's easy for us to think, well, if he wants his house filled, why isn't a church house filled? Well, I believe it's going to be. But what he's talking about is his eternal house, that eternal house over in glory land. He, everything we do, all the feeding, it, if we don't give them Jesus, if we don't pray with them, if we don't talk to them, if we don't try God and put Jesus out there and plant that seed, we are wasting our time. It's only a temporal effect. And we are placed here to point them to an eternity, to point them to an eternal God who sent his son through, through him that they might be saved so they can spend all eternity in God's house. That's what we do this for. And God says, try me. And so you know what? We do. We try God when we pass out the food. We try God when we take out the meals. And and we try God when we get in the truck after we've gotten back home, we've got situated, and somebody calls and says, I wasn't able to make it at that time. Can you please meet me? And so we say, okay, Lord. And we get in our vehicles and we drive back up there and open things up to do stuff for them once again. Listen, I stand at the door. My wife, Sister Renee, she goes out and she walks up and down that line. She's constantly uh, visiting with them, talking to them. I'm standing there at the front door. I enjoy it because... I, when they're when they're waiting to go in to get the food when everything's going right i got them for a few minutes and i got time to talk to them i got time to get to know them i got time to pray with them i got time to be friend become friends with them over a period of weeks and stuff and i'm trying god see 
I stand at the door, I talk and pray with a lot of people. Some say, some people say that we're wasting our time with this because people, they'll, they, I've had them tell me, they say, well, them people will just, they'll agree with you. They'll tell you that they're Christian. They'll lie to you. They're just going to say whatever you want them to say. They're going to they're gonna agree with whatever you say just so they can get what they get off of you. And you know what? I say, okay, I don't care. I'm out there doing what God tells me to do. Some of them say that ground is just too hard. It's just too dry. You're wasting your time out there sowing them seed, Pastor Rick. But I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Spirit tells me that some plant, some water, but God gives the increase. I, I do my job. I do what I'm supposed to do. I plant or I try to water where, where somebody's already planted. And I believe that God says he's going to give the increase. And I believe that he will. I'm trying him on this. And I believe someday, I believe someday before I... I before Jesus comes back or I go to be with him, that this old church will not be able to hold the blessing of the people that God's going to pour into it. I believe that with all my heart. But you know, you people, we got to be careful. We got to watch. Because when I hear people tell me that, when I'm out there trying God, saying, spreading my seed, passing them out, loving on people, trying to be like Jesus, who was a friend of sinners, and I... And you know, but people will tell me, you know, them. I get phone calls from the same people, and they're telling on each other. They're lying to you, Pastor. They're 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 hoarding, Pastor. They're doing all this stuff, Pastor. You don't need to take care of them. You better watch them. They'll lie to you. They're all. They tell me this, and they they tell me that they're too far gone. They'll say they're drug addicts and they're selling it, or they're drunks, or they're adulterers, or they're thieves, or they're, they're just liars, Pastor. And I tell you something. Uh, when I hear that, I'll say, well, you know what? I really don't know what to believe except this. I know Scripture. And this is what Scripture tells me. Do, not know, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idlers, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. So I know all of them are doomed and going to hell. Everything you're telling me about these people telling me that they're sinners and they're dying and going to hell. But we're still called to plant. We're still called to go because we're, we need to watch what the attitude we get. We need to keep trying and not look at what they're doing, but look at what they can be. Because right after uh, Paul got through saying this to the church in Corinthians, he says this, And such were some of you. In other words, you used to be the same way. You used to be that kind of person. One of somewhere in there is you. But you know what? You were washed, you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of God. And so, because I know I serve a God who's the same today as he was back then, I say, okay, God, I'm going to try you again. I'm going to just keep playing them seeds, sowing them seeds. Not only that, I'm not going to sow them sparingly. I'm going to sow them wildly. I'm going to sow them abundantly. I'm going to throw them into the rocks. I'm going to throw them into the really hard people. I'm going to throw them into the hateful people. I'm going to throw them into the people who look me in the face and lie. I'm going to throw it into all of them, Lord, because I believe that you've done it before and that you're going to do it again, Lord. I fully expect him to open that window anytime now and fill the church to overflow it. All right, now, for the last little bit of the scripture today, and it says, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, so that he will not destroy the fruit, fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Now, he's referring here to the locusts and the uh, canker worms. These would come in like a great army, and they would just they could just decimate the crops. And... and uh, but yet, what you got to understand, and the point he's talking here is that just a word from the Lord, a rebuke from the Lord, will stop them in their tracks. Now, understand why this is so important that we under get this here is you you could you could the uh, Israelites they could have planted their crops at the right time and they could have watered them all during the year and they could have tended them and watched over them and grew and did everything they could to have an amazing harvest and then. 
at no fault of their own, these locusts or these canker worms or whatever nature threw at them or the enemy threw at them could come in in the late season right before the harvest and just totally wipe out, totally destroy their crops. But God says, no, when you try me, when you go out and do what I ask, when you try me, then, uh, then I, will, I will not allow this to happen. He says, he tells us here, he says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy your fruit and on the ground. So the vine uh, and nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit in your field. What you've worked for, what you've put out there, what you've labored in the field for the Lord, he will stop the enemy colt. He will not only, he, he, uh, when, like the Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, he will raise up a standard against it. And he also tells us that any weapon formed against us by the enemy, it will not prosper. Now, we've known and we've heard before, but it doesn't say that they won't come in, that the flood won't come. It doesn't say that a weapon will not be formed against you. We might have a setback. We, might, we, we will probably weather some storms. But what he is telling us, what he is promising us when we try him, when we get out there and we go and we do what he asks, is that those seeds that we've been planting, the fruit that we've been bringing along, we may not see it. We may not realize the harvest, but it won't be destroyed. And the true vine, which is Jesus Christ, he will bear fruit through our efforts. The enemy will not totally stop it, people. And in that, we can rejoice. That is the evidence that we look at when we look back at where he's brought us from and the fruit, the people we've seen come through Christ, the people we've seen give their, their uh, life to Jesus. And maybe they're not in our church, but they're still in our family of God. And that is what matters, people. The greatest blessing he can pour out from heaven when we try him is a harvest of of souls, eternal souls, people. Now, we like, like I said, and when I'm closing, we can't get discouraged. When we we gotta we gotta get that mentality, that let's try mentality. I remember when when I was growing up, especially in sports, they say you just try your best. Just get out there and try. If you will just try, you can do it. If you will just try, you can overcome. If you will just try. And God here says, if you will try me, see what a hell I'm going to bless you when you try me, when you put me to the test. Step out in faith. Step out and try God. We have seen, listen, God, God told us that he's, we're going to have a harvest that we can't contain. And we're going to see blessings of our faith the blessings of trying the Lord out of that faithfulness. And I know in whom I believe, and he's told me that it's far from over and what he's going to do in our lives, what he's going to do in the lives of the people at Hawkham Assembly of God. And I hope that that blessing we can't contain it spills over into other churches, other people preaching about Jesus. I want it to, to be so full that, that it falls out of our jug and rolls into somebody else's cup, people. We may need a bigger place to minister. We may need bigger storehouses for him to put it all in. But I want you to know I'm preaching this, and I hope that what this says should quicken you to, to also get all that junk out of your life. Because your, house, your body is a temple of Almighty God, and he's wanting to fill you up, but he can only fill you where you're empty. And when too many of us are still carrying sin, too many is carrying too much guilt, too much is, we're carrying too much of our past, we're carrying too much unforgiveness, forgiveness we're carrying a lot of things that takes up a lot of space in us and God says if you'll give all that to me come on give me a try and see if I won't replace all that old hardness and all that old bitterness and all that stuff that's 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 residing and causing spiritual rot causing hard feelings it, it's just it's just tearing you up God says try me and see if I don't fill you up with a a, a, a a fountain of living water is what he told us that'll bubble up out of us where we'll never thirst again. Another blessing. He's going to fill us up with that fountain. He wants to bless us. He wants to change us. He wants to wash away all that old crap from our old lives and fill us with the power of the Holy Ghost in there. He's told us that. We need more rooms in our hearts and more rooms in our souls for the blessing because we can't contain the love. We can't contain the provision. Well, our children won't be able to contain the new brothers and sisters in the faith. And, and we, we can't contain when the kingdom of God 
pours out the blessing that it wants to upon us and upon our church and upon our community. That's what I'm wanting to see. That's what God is trying to do. Don't give up. Look at what's going on. Tell people about it so they'll get excited about it. This is how God grows his kingdom through his blessings, through his provision, which is all made possible when we have faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and we take him upon his word and we try him. We should try God, especially because he never runs short on the blessings for the children of his kingdom. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you this day for your word. We, Lord, we could give you praise for just all, we could just go on and on of the blessings that I've seen you pour out of where you've taken us from and, and, and where you've taken us to already and the things that we see coming down the road, Lord. And we know it's because we simply try you. When we're trusting in your word that, that you've given to us and, and through the, the, the uh, what we've learned, dear God, through faithfulness, through watching you, dear God, and watching you move. And when people say it's impossible, well, we say all things are possible with you, dear God. You've done things that only you and you alone can do, Lord. Let us open our mouths to praise you. Let us let this exciting, you know, continue to fill our spirit. Continue, Lord, to pour into us through the power of the Holy Ghost, dear God, that we have that power to be your witnesses in the world about this blessing. First, the blessing of our salvation through Jesus, and then the blessing of provision that we use to point to Jesus, dear God. Let everything we say and do let us continue to try you. Let us continue to just take what you pour out upon us and turn it back to bless your kingdom in the, any way that we can and give you all the glory for every bit of it. In Jesus' name, Lord, amen and amen.